Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And we would love it right now if whatever you're listening, wherever you're listening to this, just send one of the links to a friend. Say, hey, Mm -hmm. listen along with me. Also, if you're on Facebook, check out our community. Just look for Daily Bible Podcasts under groups. We would love to have you there. Also, while you're sending your best friend, your grandmother, or your granddaughter a link while you're sharing that little link off of the podcast platform, also rate us, give us some stars, give us some love, and also drop a comment in and say why you appreciate Daily Bible Podcast. Okay, so today we are reading Leviticus 20, Leviticus 21, and Leviticus 22. And today's passage continues with God telling Moses about the punishments for sin. And as I read through today, I kept seeing the words, be set apart. And of course, we know that that is a common phrase throughout the book of Leviticus, be set apart, be set apart. And God wanted, no, no, he needed to wipe out the wickedness and he needed his people to be clean, to be holy because he, he, the God of Israel is holy. And because of this, there had to be some very serious consequences for sin. And like, as I was reading this, I kept thinking, wow, God is serious. Like these consequences are next level. Trisha is going to get into some of those details for us. But the first sin that is mentioned is the sin of offering your children as a sacrifice to Moloch. And the consequence for this is stoning. And I just kept thinking, how hard would that be? Like this Mm -hmm. seems to be a consequence for everyone because it's, it's, if you're in the crowd watching this, Not only are you going to learn, don't do that, but that would just hurt to watch this or even to be a part of that if, if there's people watching and it just, again, it feels like a punishment on both sides. Like these were capital offenses. Like this was a crime and this was also part of the justice system. Like rocks were hurled. What rocks were hurled at a person as a means of execution. And this form of execution was prescribed for these certain offenses, like like sacrificing your children, like Mm -hmm. idolatry by God's chosen people, like blaspheming the Lord, willful murder, sexual adultery. God took these sins seriously because their enemies were watching and they were learning. And remember, God was the God who took them out of Egypt. Their enemies were watching every every step of the way. Yeah. And I mean, that act of stoning, you're right. It's like people had to participate. It talks about the whole community coming coming together for stoning. But the sin was horrible too. Well, yes. Um, no, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that. It, yeah, yeah, it was. But yeah. just the whole thing. It's yeah. just so real. Like now, people go into a courthouse and they, I mean, it's just, we're so removed from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but so it's true. difficult to imagine also the time when sacrificing one's child to a statue was considered acceptable to appease a deity. Like, right. you know, I mean, I just cannot imagine. We do that's, everything. That's, to that's true. Like it had to have happened once and it had to have happened. And people were like, hey, this is okay. Like, oh. yeah, where did that come up with? I mean, just right. evil, pure evil. And mm-hmm. those actions suggest a deep rooted fear. When I when I was thinking about this, like what would drive someone to commit this act of extreme depravity as, you know, tr- sacrificing their child to appease their God? They must have been so afraid of God's going to wipe them out or the gods. And I'm not talking about like God, Yahweh that Mm -hmm. we know, like they were so fearful that this is something they think that needs to be done. So this profound evil need to be eradicated. The Israelites are preparing to enter a new territory and God is trying to lay out the foundation for their future. So Molech, which was the deity associated with these sacrifices, these child sacrifices was 
typically depicted as a human body with the head of a ram, and the narrative expands to discuss the various forms of idolatry and sexual immorality. So there's a lot of icky stuff in there. Um, Leviticus 20.23 warns against adopting the customs of the nations being displaced by the Israelites, citing their detestable practices as a reason for divine displeasure. So, like, don't go in there and take over the land and just start doing what they're doing. Like, don't do that. Um, Then this chapter continues speaking about their spiritual prostitution and many sexual acts. So in Leviticus 20, 23, God says, do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. Mm -hmm. Yet on the other side of this warning, so he's warning them, don't do this, but there's also a promise. So verse 24 says, but I have promised you, you will possess their land because I will give it to you as your possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord, your God, who has set you apart from all other people. So he wants to give them wonderful things and give them this land, but he doesn't want them to do the evil that the other people are doing. Um, in Leviticus 21, it presents further directives to priests, emphasizing the importance of holiness and avoiding actions that could dishonor, dishonor God's name. And these priests are tasked with offering sacrifices described as special gifts to the Lord, gifts of food for their God. Um, and so God does want sacrifices to him, but these are food. These are, you know, animals. These are not children. And he's very prescribed ways for them to do it. Um, Leviticus 22 details uh, who is permitted to partake in the special, the sacred offerings and it outlines the standards for the offerings. So some of the offerings, when they sacrificed an animal, the priest would take portions of that and eat it as part of their meal. That was like their dinner. Um, and so the failure to adhere to these guidelines is seen as bringing shame upon God, reinforcing mm-hmm. the theme of maintaining purity and dedication in service to the divine. So there's certain certain sacrifices that could be eaten, certain sacrifices that could not be eaten. This is how the priests were provided for through these sacrifices and offerings, and he's laying out how it's supposed to be. So this is very different than what the, the, the other nations were doing and taking their children and worshiping idols. Um, and he doesn't want them to follow in their footsteps. And, you know, I, I know I'm not supposed to get ahead of ourselves, but I am thinking about the entire story of the Bible right now and how serious God was in these laws I mean, think about the exiles, think about Isaiah, think about what he was saying, Jeremiah, what he was saying and what he was saying, hey, look, Mm -hmm. Israel, this is what you have done. You have you have continued to sacrifice your children. You've continued to put other gods above our holy God. You have done this. And and so later on, we will see consequences to Mm -hmm. not following God. And, and, And here God's laying it out going, hey just follow me. I am, I am your God. I call you to be a set apart people. It's not that hard. Love me, love only me and don't look around. Just love me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry. I just got ahead of our reading, but that's, that's what I was thinking of just as I was mm-hmm. reading, as I was listening mm-hmm. to you summarize things is that, um, we, we can do. see what happens when they yeah. didn't obey what he said. And yeah. it just is bad, bad news. As humans, we Oh, are. Israel. <laughs> oh, Israel. Um, yeah, as, as humans, we like, it's hurting cats. That's, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, God's job is hurting cats. That's a very hard, hard job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have the word of the day coming up for you. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day is part, and part can be defined, is defined as a portion, a piece or fragment separated from the whole thing. So think about a, an orange. You've peeled the orange and you're, you've divided the orange into parts, um, and I think all the way back to creation with me, God created lights to separate Mm -hmm. the day from the night, from seasons, from years. And there was, there was a part, a separation. 
Like when you're, I, I also thought of my hair. I part my hair. There's a separation. God created humans. He made them male and female, and they were the same, yet they were different. He set them apart mm. differently. Mm. And think of this human race. Within this human race that we are all a part of, he takes a part, he takes a segment of that and, and claims one part for himself. Like we are called, we are a part, but we're also called to be set apart. God wanted his people to be set apart. He needed his priests to be set apart differently than even his people. So another segment in there, another piece of that pie, because after all, they were representing him. And God's standards for the sins we read about today was death. And it was true then, and it is now, as we, we as God's children are called to be a part, a separate part, to look different, to obey his ways, to follow him, to be set apart. But hallelujah, the sacrifice has been made on our behalf, and Christ died for our sins. We don't have, like, like in God asking us to be um, sinless and to be holy, we don't have to sacrifice. We don't have to die because Christ died for us. Like, as I read today, I kept thinking about dependency. Like, this is what it looks like to be dependent on God for our life. And we read in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so it is it was a truth then, and it is a truth now. We, as God's children, are called to be a part. We're called to be a separate part, to look different, to obey his ways, to follow him, to be set apart. And as I said before, hallelujah, the sacrifice has been made on our behalf. Yeah, and it makes me think of Exodus 38, where it talked about the high priest wore that turban. And it was adorned with a pure gold plate inscribed with holiness to the Lord. Ooh. So the concept of holiness is emphasized repeatedly, that purity, that holiness, over a hundred times throughout the text, it says holiness, 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 highlighting that God is holy and he desires his people to embody holiness in their actions. So God is holy and he wants his people to represent that too. It's God's intention as setting his people apart, not merely for the sake of separation, not just to be separated, but to foster a flourishing community. Um, God knew that their behavior, the behavior of individuals reflected on the community as a whole, especially since God's presence dwelled among them. Mm. Thus, they were called to mirror the holiness in their lives. Like he wants them because they're representing him. And each individual is representing the community as a whole. So, you know, drawing this parallel, my teen teenagers, uh, they are working in the community. They're working fast food jobs. And it got to be easy for a while um, for them to change jobs a lot. One of my teachers, I mean, one of my one of my teenagers began working and frequently changed jobs. And, she, you know, we adopted her when she's a little bit older. She has many health problems. And there's some days she just didn't want to go to work. So she just would call and not go to work. And then she'd quickly. Hey, I, I'm, I'm one of them. What? You used to oh, do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't call in, but there's, there's some mornings that I'm like. I just there are some days that I want to go to work. But she would call. She would okay. just quit. Like not even oh, give them two weeks. Oh, to okay. I wasn't following no. that. She would quit. Okay. She would just quit and and not even give them notice. But then because they people are so desperate, they would just hire her. They didn't even ask for references or anything. And so, you know, it became easy for her to be lazy <laughs> to do things that way because she just get another job easy. Um then I told her, like, you can't keep doing that because your name is is going out there your last name first of all Goyer is going out there and you have all these little siblings behind you and if you're going to do that you are representing the whole family you're representing your little siblings who are going to go try to get a job mm -hmm. and so that's is a problem um so that's as a true. mom i knew the broader implications of her actions so first she was acting in disrespect toward her employers and then she was developing a bad work 
ethic. I know that's going to impact her in life. So a better thing would to talk to the employers about her health concerns, figure out how to balance that, um, maybe schedule things a little bit differently. So she worked later in the day when she struggles in the morning. So there's things that she could do differently, but since, um, since she didn't want to listen to me, it just became a problem. We're like, finally, we're like, you cannot quit another job. And thankfully, she's been working at one for a while. But consequences are a good thing. Like her not having consequences for, for quitting and people just hiring her, it was not a good thing for her. It was not teaching her the right things. I was trying to tell her, um, but it was not teaching her anything because she was getting no consequences for her actions. And, and thankfully she's learned and she does much better listen to me now than she did a couple of years ago. But in the context of the Israelites, their choices are reflecting each other and the holiness of God himself. I mean, mm-hmm. I could be like, Oh, Goyer, you're, you're the one whose daughter quits every job. <laughs> like, I mean, that's a little reflection on me, but they are reflecting yeah. God and the holiness of God. And that's a big deal. I think we forget, we easily forget that, that us individually represent the collective unit, like the church that we belong to, or the greater church of Christ. We forget that we represent one piece of that pie. Mm-hmm. And there is consequences consequences when we stray when even when we stray a little bit but today in our reading the consequences were huge but it's again it goes back to who are we representing we are representing god we are representing a holy god and he wants to be known not just by us not just by our fellow christians but by everyone as a holy god mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, Trisha, would you pray for us today? I would love to pray for us. Um, Kind of like sobering, sobering moment here, but I would love love to pray for us. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you that we are set apart, that we are um, different than the world, that you desire for us to be different, that you desire for us to live holy unto you. It's a big responsibility, Lord, but also you are a big God that we're representing. Mm. I pray, Lord, that you will give us a desire to be set apart that comes from our heart, not just worries about the rules, Lord, but it'll be heart deep that we can want Mm. to do things. We can desire to do things the right way to glorify you with our lives. I pray that we will just not only just not do things, but we will go further and worship you and let our light shine for you, dear Heavenly Father. May we be set apart to reflect all your goodness, Lord. And I thank you for the opportunity to read in community that we can be set apart together. And we praise you and thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Leviticus 23, 24, and the first 23 verses of Leviticus 25. Life Audio partners with us to bring you daily Bible podcast. You wouldn't be listening to Trisha and myself without their partnership. Lifeaudio.com is the place to go to find other great Christian podcasts that will encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.